Hey guys, welcome to the channel, as you see in the thumbnail what if, Naruto time traveled to save Kashina and married her. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content, and subscribe my channel and like this video. Though support and follow the win style is for writing that awesome fanfic, and also make sure to comment on this story, link in the description. Let's start this video. Hurry up Sasuke. As soon as we seal the Kaiubi no one will stop us. Shouted one Madara Chiha while he was standing on the hand of Jido Mezo statue. I already know that. Screamed Sasuke back to him on the opposite hand. The giant humanoid statue with eight out the nine eyes it has were open, while a constant stream of vibrant azure light was bubbling out of its mouth and onto the lifeless Naruto Uzumaki. I can't die he here. Naruto whispered to himself as he half turned his head towards where the blue light was coming from. The red ominous light was radiating from Naruto's mouth and into the awaiting mouth of the Jido Mezo statue. Contrary to what people believed, Naruto and the Kaiubi were on good terms with each other. Not best friends, more companions. But, nevertheless they were friends. With his last bit of strength he flew open his vibrant blue eyes that morphed into a steel pinwheel shape with three times at the edges. He had been granted the Sharingan from Abido when he defeated him in a battle to the death during his attack at the shoreline. It had taken everything Naruto had and then some to be able to defeat the Ichiha in the end. It was when Abido was dying on the ground with a large spiral mark in his stomach that he seemed to find the light from within the darkness he had been walking. As a way of retribution to Naruto for the damage he had caused, he gave Naruto his own Sharingan that had Manjikyu Sharingan and Kamui. It seemed that when he implanted it into Naruto, the Kaiubi changed his DNA and molecular structure so that the Sharingan was ingrained into his DNA. This seemed to have a very, very positive outlook to it from what the Kaiubi had told him. It seemed that when he ingrained it into his DNA, Naruto not only gained the eternal Manjikyu Sharingan from the transfer. And. If confused, when the DNA was forced to add it to his molecular structure, it classed Abito's Sharingan as someone else's. He also seemed to have an advanced version of the Sharingan and Abito's Kamui in general. Naruto's Sharingan was like any other Sharingan, the three times to start with, then upgraded to EMS. But, the difference between the Sharingan and Naruto's was that, Naruto seemed to have a much clearer vision than the normal Sharingan, as well as not only being able to copy, he could see it once, break it down in an instant, and be able to master it from one glance. Naruto's Sharingan wasn't the normal blood red color, but instead was a dark silver color, with three times each navy blue in color, with an inner circle between the tomes and the pupil. However, with such a power boost, you're probably wondering how he is in the position that he is now. Having the Kaiubi extracted from him while Madara and Sasuke slowly siphoning at his life force. All of it happened at the end of the fight with Abido. Flashback. Just after Naruto had finished Abido and had gained his new eyes. He set off to join the five cages that were currently fighting the Ido Tensei Madara. He shortly arrived to see all the cages being struck down in front of him with Madara, all the while cackling like a maniac. Rage was starting to build up inside of him, and I was all aimed at one zombie freak. Slowly, Naruto entered his biju cloak, while only just starting to feel the chakra drain he had after fighting Abido. Madara. I'll kill you. Screamed Naruto as he literally teleported from his spot in a yellow streak aimed straight for the elder Ichiha like a bullet from a gun. Wahaha, you think an insect like you could stand up to a god like me eh? Madara asked rhetorically as he prepared to counter the blow. It was only a few milliseconds before Naruto covered the massive distance between the two warriors. His silvery cold eyes focused solely on Madara as he threw his fist forward to the man's face. Madara saw the attack coming at him at normal speed, seeing as Naruto was moving at hyper speeds that rivaled the speed of the Horatian. However, Madara didn't expect that his block would have been seen even earlier and slower than his own through Naruto's eyes, who managed to adjust his punch just enough to send the Ichiha careening towards a cliff face. As Madara was sent into the cold, rock-hard cliff, he completely missed Naruto's silver eyes and then morphing just after he had been hit. What really caught him off guard was when he looked towards where Naruto was to see him completely gone. Whipping his head behind him, he only just caught sight of the end of the vortex the Kamui produced. Only to feel his neck literally snap back from the force of the punch sent towards his exposed face. Naruto was just coming to terms with the Kamui ability he had been given by Abido. It seemed that not only was it quicker than his, it also required less chakra than what Abido had described without having the cool down for the intangible ability. Quickly picking himself out from the floor that Madara was stuck in, he casted his red stony gaze onto the blonde Jinchuriki. It seemed that Abido had betrayed me. Looks like I'll have to take you down quickly. He muttered more to himself, but Naruto still heard it. That's if you can, old man. Shouted Naruto to keep him confident composure on the outside, on the inside was a different kettle of fish, he was literally shitting himself for being so careless to attack a freaking Ido Madara. 
As soon as Naruto had spoken, Madara shot at him with great speed and engaged Naruto in a tojutsu fight that went on for what seemed like hours, but was actually 5 minutes. It was during the 5 minutes mark that Naruto managed to get a blow through Madara's seemingly impenetrable tojutsu style that Naruto didn't pick up on, was that he was copying the style and mastering it without even knowing it. Naruto smacked Madara with an enhanced biju punch that sent Madara straight through some trees that weren't broken down and into the face of the cliff where the fight began. Naruto was so focused on fighting the old leader of the Achiha that he never even noticed the presence of Sasuke Achiha behind him. That was when he felt it, a hand filled with lightning chakra plunged into Naruto's shoulders. Snapping his head behind to see the fiery cold gaze of Sasuke he slowly felt his world go black as Madara cast a Tsukiyomi on him. When Naruto finally awaked, he saw himself levitating off the floor with a bright blue orb of chakra surrounding. End of flashback. With one final push of what chakra Naruto had left. His eyes morphed into the six-star windmill that was his EMS, his gaze went to the statue that had suspended him in the air. The statue's eyes wandered to him before they all turned silver into a fully matured silver Sharingan. The Jido Mezo statue started shaking violently as all the red yaki that it had absorbed into it from the other eight biju shot forward like a sprinter and into Naruto's mouth. WWH what is going on Madara? Sasu casked with fear evident in his eyes as Naruto started to a light silver almost white color. I don't know Sasu was all Madara could stammer out before a white beam of light shot from Naruto and into the gut of Madara. It all happened in a few seconds as Madara seemingly vanished into the white light and joined up with Naruto. The white aura surrounded Naruto as his gaze wandered to Sasuke. His steely, silver eyes met his blood-red ones. It seemed like an eternity to Sasuke as Naruto finally tore his gaze away from Sasuke and made three hand signs. The portal seemed to have opened in front of Naruto as he finished his hand signs. Slowly stepping into the bright yellow portal, the yellow-haired Jinchuriki said his final goodbyes to his world. Naruto's eyes burst open and shut just as quickly as they opened because of the blistering sun shining down on him like Kami was looking upon him herself. Naruto bolted into an upright position almost instantly. Completely confused by where he was, the last thing he remembered was, he was in a cave with Madara and Sasuke, then he absorbed all the bijus in the statue by forcing it to reverse the process, and then everything turned white. W where am I? He asked no one in particular with a croaky voice that sounded sore. Rubbing his throat a little, he tried to stand only to find it a futile attempt because he was sent crashing back into the floor. Adjusting his improved eyesight that he didn't know where he got from, he looked around the area he was in. It looked like he was in part of the Kanoha forest. The only problem was that the deep forest surrounding Kanoha was burnt down in the final fight against Arachimaru between Jiraiya and Tsunade. Off to the side he noticed a river, ever so slowly crawling to not hurt his seemingly smaller body. He hefted himself to the river for a drink, but what surprised him next was the biggest surprise of his life. Where the hell am I? Screamed Naruto at the top of his lungs, sending birds flying out of trees. It seemed that whatever happened to Naruto after he passed out in the cave, which was the only memory he could recall, somehow messed with his brain. And the reflection of him on the water was a 12-year-old him. However, there were significant differences. For one, his hair still maintained its spikiness, just pure white with grey streaks reaching to the back of his neck. Two jaw-length bangs and a pure white fringe just covering the tops of his eyes. His face was what you would consider handsome, but with a rogue look giving him a rebel heartthrob face. His muscles seemed to be more defined than when he was actually a loud-mouth 12-year-old, giving him an athletic build with a well-defined upper body. Currently he had on a white long-sleeved shirt with two orange stripes going down the arms to the cuffs of the shirt. On his legs were dark blue shinobi pants with white tape at the bottom holding them to his ankles. Overall, Naruto looked a lot better than when he was actually 12. It was then that he noticed four decent-sized chakra signatures speeding towards him, they were probably sized reserves he noted. Wait what? When had he been able to sense chakra? All Naruto could remember was his name and what happened in a cave with two men called Madara and Sasuke. It was a few minutes before the Kanoha Anbu arrived near the river to find a white-haired kid lying on the floor with various cuts and nicks, littering his exposed skin. Quickly rushing over to the boy, they lifted him up and shot straight back to Kanoha to show the Sandane what they found to the massive spike in chakra in the forest. After a few minutes of tree hopping, the Nico Anbu looked at the boy in her arms before coming to the conclusion that a boy shouldn't have been the cause of the spike. So she decided there that she needed to ask him a few questions to the almost asleep boy. Hey kid, what's your name? Asked the Anbu. Naruto looked at her through his half-lidded eyes before answering her question, my name is Naruto. Just Naruto. He said, it wasn't that he couldn't remember his last name oh the hell with it, he didn't know what his last name was. Anbu looked to be in deep thought before nodding at his answer and asking a few more, why were you on the floor in the foliage? And how come I've never seen you before? 
she questioned in a professional tone as they strolled through the gates of Kanoha. Nodding at the gate guards as the two Anbu passed. Naruto HMM apostrophe D in contemplation, his face adopted a clueless look that screamed Kawi as he stared at the floor of Kanoha. No memories rushing through his head of how he got there or why he was there, finally answered, to be honest, I don't know how I got in the forest, and I don't know why I couldn't stand when I woke up. He replied depressingly as the three of them arrived at the door of the Sandane. Knocking on the door they heard a short but firm come in from the opposite side. Quickly opening the door, the Anbu placed Naruto in the chair in front of the Hokage that was here as in Siratobi. He might not have looked as old as he did in Naruto's dimension, but he still had the wrinkle marks. Well. Nico, Bear, why have you brought me a child? I asked for you to check out the chakra spike. Hiruzen asked calmly. Nico bowed in front of the Hokage as she lifted her head and answered, me and Bear arrived at the chakra spike to find Naruto here on the floor with cuts and nicks littering his body. Hiruzen's eyes seemed to have softened when he looked at Naruto's vibrant azure eyes. Quickly forming a few questions in his head, he soon started asking his questions to the depressed looking boy. Hey there Naruto, what were you doing in the forest? He asked sincerely. I, I don't know to be honest Tokijama, I woke up and noticed I was in a forest. I don't have a clue where I am or how I got here. Replied the boy. Well Naruto, you are in Kanoha. Do you know anything about a chakra spike where you came from? Naruto looked into Hiruzen's eyes for a second before shaking his head negatively and a dejected look on his face. The Hokage beckoned for his Anbu to leave the room so he could talk to the sad 12 years old alone. The Anbu nodded and all shunshin it out of the office. The withering Hokage stood up from behind his desk and strolled over to the sad boy, getting on eye level with him, the Hokage wrapped the boy in a hug that shocked Naruto the most. He was a stranger to this man, yet he wrapped Naruto in a compassionate hug. Slowly tears cascaded from the corners of Naruto's eyes, but no sound was heard as he returned the hug. It was then a few minutes later that Naruto let go of the Hokage before resigning himself to the next lot of questions. Now Naruto, do you have any family? Hiruzen asked as Naruto shook his head, hmm, how have you been surviving for so long? I really don't know. I have forgotten everything about me from when I woke up in the forest. I only know my name because it was in my clothes. Naruto said dejectedly to the withering Hokage. The Hokage seemed to be in thought about his answer before smiling and nodding to the boy. Well Naruto, seeing as you don't know where you are, and you don't know where to go. I'll offer you a place in Kanoha. He said while smiling. The smile adorned Naruto's handsome face as he quickly nodded his head up and down as fast as he could. The Hokage chuckled at his answer before continuing to the white-haired boy, for you to be properly inducted into Kanoha, I will have to see if you fit the criteria to be a genin for Kanoha. You're just in luck as well because team placement is tomorrow, and I have Jounin coming to my office later. The aging Hokage pulled a test out of the drawer in his desk and placed it in front of Naruto with a pen to the side. Beckoning Naruto to move towards the test and read it. This is the genin test Naruto. You have 50 minutes to finish it and then we'll grade it, he said with a smile. Naruto nodded before picking up the pen and writing his answers. If he was honest with himself, the test was about as hard as trying to jump. Meaning it wasn't hard at all. He finished the test in 15 minutes due to him wanting to look like he spent time answering the questions. However, what shocked Naruto was that he seemed to know all the answers to the test. How he knew all the answers was news to him. Quickly handing the test back to the Sandane for it to be graded, much to the Hokage's input which he told the boy that he needed more time to finish the test. However, to his glee, the Sandane looked stumped. Naruto had spent 15 minutes answering the questions and got all of them right, indicating the quickest academy test completed ever. Humming over his stumped look, the Hokage smiled at the boy before telling him about the next part of the test. He cleverly hid his curiosity as to how the boy knew that. Hell, the boy himself only knew his name. Now then Naruto, I'm going to have to ask you to perform the Henge, Bunshin and Kawarimi. Do you know what they are? Naruto just nodded his head, somehow already knowing what they were, before doing a seal less and speech less Henge into the Hokage. Much to the Hokage's shock that no mere genin should be able to do that. When the smoke cleared, Naruto used the Kawarimi to replace himself with the Hokage's chair, and back before gravity could even play a part in bringing the Hokage to the floor, well again, much to Hiruzen's shock. It was then that a clone seemed to materialize next to Naruto without hand seals, shouting out the or even the smoke that signifies a clone. It seriously stumped the Hokage as well as his glee. He had just found a prodigy that even outmatched that of his student Orochimaru. Oh how strong Kanoha would be when he grew up to protect it, after he had finally either found his memories, or gained new ones to replace the old ones. I'll ask Yamanaka to look through the boy's memories. The Hokage mused to himself before continuing. Well dot that was unexpected for Naruto. You are, for better lack of the word, a prodigy at heart. Having no memory, then doing all of this in less than 30 minutes is a feat that hasn't been done yet, up until now. 
I'd have to say I'm so surprised I'm considering taking you on as an apprentice. The Hokage chuckled at the boy's face as it lit up like a light bulb. Now seeing as you passed the test with flying colors, I'll tell the teachers and Jown in of this dot dot unexpected circumstance and tell them of your skills. However, I don't have a place for you to sleep at the moment, so I will show you to my house. I'm sure my wife would let you sleep there for a while. Naruto nodded dumbly before him and Saratobi Shunshin out of the Hokage's office. They arrived at the door to his mansion in a few seconds and walked through the door. Naruto was about to walk into the kitchen to find Hiruzen's wife when a hand on his shoulder stopped him in the process. Looking back at the Hokage, Naruto noticed a Konoha insignia on metal plating stitched to a black cloth in Hiruzen's hand. Put it on Naruto, it signifies you are a member of Konoha and will always be proud of your new home. He smiled warmly while placing the headband around Naruto's forehead. Tears started to brim at the corners of Naruto's eyes, he finally had a memory of something other than the strange dark cave and then strange men in the cave. Quickly thanking the Hokage, Naruto attached a hit I ate so that it loosely hung around his neck and walked with the Hokage into his kitchen. At first Buwako Saratobi was happy, then confused, then later shocked when her husband Hiruzen told her of how the boy was found with no memory whatsoever. Well Naruto, I'd be more than happy to let you stop here as much as you want. Buwako smiled at the grinning boy. Thank you buwako san I promise I'll help out around the house if you need. Replied the white-haired boy. However, Buwako just seemed to wave him off before replying, Nonsense Naruto, you are a guest. She said as Naruto sighed in defeat. Here is in Saratobi just sat there with a happy smile on his face as he watched his wife and young Naruto interact. It was as if they were already family, it was truly a heartwarming moment for the Hokage. Well Naruto, why doesn't Buwako take you to your room while I go to the meeting with the Jonans that I have scheduled? Asked Hiruzen while Naruto and Buwako nodded their heads and headed off upstairs. Hiruzen stared at where Naruto had eaten his ramen that his wife prepared for him, before the sun shone out of the room and back to his office. When Hiruzen arrived in his office via plume of smoke, he noticed all ten he ordered to have teams calmly waiting for him. The Jonans consisted of two Ichihas, one Yamanaka, two Hayugas, Jiraiya, Tsunade and Rachimaru of the Sanin, and two more Jonans. Essence, where have you been? I could have been collecting research you know. Winked Jiraiya to his sensei while he didn't pick up on the evil gleam in his teammate's eyes. BFFT research, that lame excuse for your writing smut that hasn't even been published yet. Said a highly unimpressed Tsunade. Everyone in the room sweat dropped when Jiraiya fell on the floor crying and I'm tears and murmuring about women not understanding his work. Hiruzen just cleared his throat and got everyone's attention back on him and not his depressed student. Well yes Jiraiya, you could have been collecting dot dot research. However, there are more important situations at the moment. I think you should all know about the chakra spike earlier today, don't you? Hiruzen asked rhetorically. Of course everyone here would have sensed it, but only those chosen by the Hokage were sent to see the source of the massive chakra spike. The spike in chakra was so big that if you combined the amount of chakra and Kanoha together, it would only just cover maybe a quarter of the chakra. Everyone in the room grew serious at the mention of the chakra spike, and by the looks on their faces, they were demanding an explanation. Father said whatever the chakra spike was, it was highly dangerous and shouldn't be investigated. Spoke up Yakumi Ichiha, followed by a nod from Teka Ichiha. The Hayugas just scoffed at the Ichiha clan, while well inside they were probably the most curious. Well yes, the level of chakra was dangerously high. So high in fact, that if it were to be directed at you, most seasoned Jonin would lose consciousness. Hiruzen said before continuing, however, at the chakra spike source was a young boy, the age of 12, was found. I don't believe that he was the chakra spike, but could be linked to the chakra spike. However, when my Anbu came back with the boy, he said he didn't remember anything as to how he got here or where he was. So, I allowed him to join Kanoha if he passed the genin test. Finished the Hokage as he looked at the strange expressions. That earned quite a few raised eyebrows as to why he would do that, a boy that could only remember his name was probably not going to be able to pass. Why would you do that, Sensei? If he could only remember his name, why would you tell him to take the test? Asked a curious Jiraiya. Hiruzen looked all the participants in the room straight into the eyes before he finished the rest of his tale. Well Jiraiya-kun, it was to confirm my suspicions, he then took a deep breath, Naruto, the white-haired boy, was able to finish the written test in 15 minutes and perform the three required effortlessly and without hand signs or speech. Everyone's eyes shot up dramatically, Orochimaru was pretty much foaming around the mouth at the level of skill the boy could or does possess. Jiraiya and Tsunade were shocked more than anything, the boy was a lot better than them in the academy. While the Ichiha and Hayuga were planning to get the boy under their wing in their respective clans. Hey are you serious sensei? The boy is that talented? Asked a freaked out Jiraiya. Yes Jiraiya-kun, young Naruto is the word prodigy down to the core. Replied Hiruzen. 
Orochimaru finally spoke up after compassing himself dramatically, who gets the boy Hiruzen sensei? I'd gladly take him under my wing. Craved Orochimaru. Hiruzen just eyed his student for a second before closing his eyes and pinching his nose. He wondered if this was the right plan of action. I have decided to give Naruto to my daughter and her pre-selected team consisting of Nawaki Senju, Kishina Yuzumaki and Makoto Ichiha. Finish the Hokage getting a destroyed desk in the process by an enraged Tsunade. Why is Nawaki going to Natsumi? I should be his sensei. Screamed Tsunade while Hiruzen sat there emotionlessly. Tsunade-chan, I decided to give Nawaki to Natsumi and the team, Nawaki, Kishina and Makoto, because overall that team shows good promise for an all-around team best suited for all situations. Natsumi would be best suited for teaching Nawaki because, Nawaki like Natsumi, is an ninjutsu specialist. Kishina because Natsumi is experienced with Yuinjutsu in case the Kaiubi decides to try and force his way out. Well Makoto is best friends and rival to Kishina, thus meaning they could bring the best out of each other to benefit not only themselves but Konoha in general. Calmly, said Hiruzen. Tsunade was about to revolt when Jiraiya put a hand on her shoulder and successfully calmed her down. I see, sorry sensei. Said a depressed Tsunade. It's quite alright Tsunade, I understand that being his brother you would want to teach him. She just nodded and stepped back in line with the other Jonin. Well Hiruzen scanned the room. Now then, you all know your teams and team placement tomorrow. I suggest you all make it on time to see this year's new genin, if they pass your test first. Said Hiruzen and in return received a few highs in the process as everyone disappeared from the room in a plume of smoke. The old Hokage just shook his head at what Naruto had caused just by showing up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Punching the bridge of his nose, he said to himself. Naruto, Naruto, Naruto. Naruto. Let's see what you have got to benefit Kanoha. And if my suspicions are correct, you would have caused that massive chakra spike. Used a hokage before he went about fixing his desk. Chirping, that was all he could hear from the birds outside his window, as the sun managed to find crevices in his draped blinds and into its awaiting victim's eyes. Naruto might not be able to remember much Ak anything. But still, he had already grown an irrational hatred of sunlight and mornings. Slowly rolling over on his queen-sized bed that lay in the middle of a clean and clutter-free room, he finally sat up as he knew he wouldn't be getting back to sleep anytime soon. Opening one eye slowly as sleep seemed to want to consume his already drooping eyes while he surveyed his room. Swiftly swinging his legs over the side of the mattress, he threw the covers that hid his already well-developed and muscular legs that one acquired through lots of strengthening and training. Grudgingly, he got out of the comfy haven called a bed and lugged himself over to the private bathroom located behind the door in the corner of the room for his morning pleasantries. The white-haired child just sighed to himself as he stared out of the window in the bathroom. By his estimation, it was about 6 a.m., meaning he didn't have to be at the academy for another two hours. I wonder how people will react to me. I'm not sure if I leave and make any friends, let alone make a good impression. Naruto mused to himself as he exited the bathroom after showering and completing his morning routine. For some reason, he thought now would be a good time to train. He didn't even have a clue where the thought came from, let alone know what he needed to train himself in. It was almost like he wanted to train, but couldn't remember what to train himself in or for. The thoughts of not remembering anything were quickly aggravating the white-haired boy. He didn't know why he couldn't remember anything, yet some things were coming through to him, and he didn't know what to do for them. After finally crushing his depressing thoughts about memory troubles, he placed a smile on his elegant whiskered face and strolled out of his bedroom after he finally finished getting dressed and headed straight for the kitchen in the Siratobi home. He calmly walked down the stairs just outside of his door and walked into the shiny kitchen. The wacko was situated in front of the stove with bacon and eggs cooking in the frying pan. Steam hastily rolled off the sizzling food and out of the window in front of the stove, he quickly sat down in an unoccupied chair as Hiruzen sat to his left, reading a newspaper of the local Kanoha Times. Naruto studied the front page for a while before finally alerting the Siratobi residents to his presence. Good morning Bawako-san, Hokage-sama. Naruto said in a chirpy voice with a smile present on his face. The wacko jumped a mile when a voice came out of nowhere from behind her, while Hiruzen raised an eyebrow and placed the paper on the mahogany table. How was your sleep my boy? And if you don't mind me asking, how were you able to sneak up on me and Bawako? We are seasoned ninjas, you know. He finished with a chuckle at the boy's eyes that shot open like saucers. I sneak up on you, all I did was walk into the room and sit down. I'm not even sure how to sneak up on you to be honest. The boy replied exultantly, he was proud of not knowing how to sneak up on the hokage, yet do it as though it was second nature. The Hokage looked skeptical at first, his eyes zeroed in on Naruto looking for any sign of deceit, only to come back clear. Finally after a few seconds of analyzing the boy, he sighed and picked his paper back up. 
The wako on the other hand could only just hold in the kawaii when she saw his head tilt slightly resembling that of a wolf. Now you mention it, his pupils had gone silted overnight like when a wolf goes into predatory mode. She just shrugged off the odd occurrence and handed him a fine plate filled with one egg and two strips of crispy bacon. Naruto just stared at the white and yellow blobs on his plate before glancing over to the crispy-looking strip of meat. He sighed once more this morning and looked back at Buwako expecting a face. Erm san what is these on my plate? He asked. Buwako looked at him strangely for a moment before face planting in her own hand. She had forgotten he didn't have much any memory at all. How could she have been so thoughtless? I'm sorry Naruto-kun, the white and yellow blob is called a fried egg. You get them from chickens when they lay them, while the crispy strip is called bacon. You can get that from an animal called a pig. She taught him. Naruto nodded and just absorbed the information he had been presented before scoffing down the delectable food in front of him and smiled back at Buwako before thanking her for the delicious breakfast. After he had cleaned his mouth from the grease, Naruto turned his angular face to the Hokage, who seemed to be in deep thought with a frown on his face. Okage-sama, are you alright? You seem in deep thought. Asked Naruto to one of the two only people he knew. The Hokage looked at the boy for a few seconds before nodding his head and smiled towards the considerate child. Yes Naruto-kun I'm fine, thank you for your concern. He said politely to Naruto. Naruto nodded to his answer before realizing he had a question to ask the old man. Erm Hokage-sama, do you have anything training I can do? I had an urge to hone my ninja skills for some reason, but I don't know where to start. Hiruzen moved a free hand to his chin and began to stroke the end of it. After a few seconds of thinking he finally snapped his fingers with a knowing look in his eyes. He disappeared from his chair in a plume of smoke and appeared in the same chair a few seconds later with an old book in his hands. Hiruzen placed the book in front of Naruto and he crossed his arms with a smug smile. Glancing at the cover of the book, Naruto read, Tactical Thinking for Mediocre Ninja. If anything Naruto was slightly annoyed he was given a mediocre version of the book and was about to ask why when Hiruzen spoke up again. Naruto is a book for tactics and analytical thinking. It's the same book that I got my sharp and intelligent mind from in the beginning, but I think it's about time I passed it on, don't you? He chuckled slightly. The look on Naruto's face was priceless, his mouth was left agape while his eyes were as wide as saucers. Naruto stuttered incoherent words trying to form a thank you or that he couldn't accept anything the sentimental. But one look from the aging man's eyes told Naruto no wasn't an answer. Sighing to his fate, Naruto offered the man a nice tender smile that seemed to just suit his face. He turned the first page of the book and started to absorb all the information that was presented. Hiruzen and his wife smiled nicely at the boy as he started reading. If only their son and daughter were here, maybe they could be the first friends of Naruto. Sadly, Asuma was only three, and their eldest daughter, Natsumi, was 18. Natsumi had wanted to take her little brother out to her friends so they could be introduced. Safe to say they wouldn't have even known Naruto was here at all. Well Naruto, I hope you gain Kanoha's will of fire. If and when you do, you could be a key piece in this village. Thought the Hokage as he smiled tenderly to the occupied boy. It was 8am in the village of Kanoha. The crispy cool wind blew lightly like on a summer's day, the trees were waving to passers-by. Overall, it was going to be a lovely day in Kanoha. Well that was until a lot of shrieking sounds were emanating from the academy next to the Hokage Tower. Naruto had decided he wanted to make a good impression on his new classmates. So, he turned up to the academy an hour early still reading his tactical warfare book. It was safe to say that he was so indulged in his book that he never noticed all the other children coming into the class. Their faces married by either a concerned or starry-eyed look. Some were even looking at the boy strangely like he didn't belong there. Oddly enough, it was at this moment Naruto learned the horrors often girls. The group of civilian children, or so Naruto guessed by their clothing, were talking very loudly and gawking at his appearance and facial appearance. OMG look at his whisker marks. He's a total hot eye, even hotter than Fugaku Uchiha. Squawked one of the civilian girls, a bit too loud for Naruto's sensitive hearing, while a scoff was heard from across the classroom from a black-haired boy. I wonder who he is. I've never seen him around before. Questioned one girl to another. Well why don't we introduce ourselves ladies? Shouted the leader of the group with a smirk and a wink. So they did, the group of six girls strolled over the white-haired boy who was sweating under the collar. Never had he been in this situation, well, to his understanding anyway. They were only two steps when loud talking made its way through the halls until a bang was heard just outside of the wobbling slide door. Yeah, I won. It just proves I'll be the hookage screamed a girl from outside of the door. That was what was heard as the door fully opened to reveal a red-haired girl with a rounded face and amethyst-colored eyes. 
Her attire was a sleeveless kimono-style blouse that was yellow in color and held closed with a green obi over a short-sleeved mesh shirt with a pair of dark blue shorts and brown shinobi sandals. She entered the room sporting a peace sign with a big grin on her face, while the girl next to her just shook her head in embarrassment. The girl next to the red-haired girl had dark long brown hair with two bangs hanging on either side of her face and black eyes. She had a dark purple jumpsuit on with a fan on the back. The top half of the fan was red, while the handle and bottom half was white. She had a ninja pouch and her left leg and open two shinobi sandals on her feet. Ekishina chan you're going to make a scene. Explained the brown-haired girl to the newly named Kishina. Don't worry about it Makoto, when I'm Hokage nobody will cause a scene. Retorted Kishina. Makoto just huffed as she observed the freakishly quiet room. What she didn't realize until a moment later was that no one was looking at them apart from the six snobby civilian girls that attended the class. She followed the gazes until it landed on a white-haired boy she had never seen before. It piqued her interest as the boy was staring at both of them, not with annoyance that Kashina sometimes got, but with curiosity. Makoto slowly leaned over the Kashina who had her eyes closed and hands behind her head, about to waltz up to her seat which was next to the white-haired boy. Hey Kashina, there is a new student by where we sit, whispered Makoto to her friend. Kashina finally opened her eyes to see the boy, who in all honesty, was quite good-looking, and when he is older, would be quite the charmer. It was then that his gaze met hers. He didn't stare at her like some of the others did, as though she didn't belong here, but with a longing in his eyes that screamed out for a friend. Kashina could feel her cheek slowly burning up from his stare, it wasn't an embarrassment, but a slight attraction towards the new boy, before she scoffed, trying to seem like she wasn't blushing at him, and walked past the girls that were staring at her and into the seat next to the boy. The group of girls that were a few steps from the white-haired Adonis, gazes intensified towards Kashina as the leader decided to speak. Hey, Tomato, you shouldn't sit next to this hunk, he is too good looking for a fruit like you. Threatened the girl, it was obvious that the girl was referred to as a tomato because of her face and hair. Naruto just frowned at the leader of the group. He might not have known this girl next to him, but she probably didn't deserve such a ridiculous nickname. So he decided to stick up for the girl, whether she needed it or not, he didn't know. But he felt a strange connection with the girl next to him, he didn't know how to explain it, but it felt like he knew her all his life. Why do you call her a tomato? Asked the enigma that was the white-haired boy, Naruto. One of the girls blushed up a storm, obviously finding his voice quite attractive, before the leader of the pack decided to indulge him. Well we call her a tomato because her hair and face resembles that of a tomato. That and when she blushes to turn bright red. Laughed the girl and most of the class. The Kodo had decided that was enough when she, out of nowhere, spoke from the seat next to Kashina and at the end of the row. Just leave Kushi-chan alone. You're all just a bunch of she said before a new voice interjected slightly louder than her own. Kashina at this point was feeling quite nervous and downtrodden. She was nervous because she didn't know how the new boy would react. She didn't know why she cared, but she wanted to make an impression and have a new friend other than Mikoto and Nawaki. However, that idea was blown out of the window when Naruto interjected over the top of her friend Mikoto in a clam voice that left her wondering how his voice overpowered Mikoto when she was shouting. First off, my name is Naruto. Second, I don't think Kashina was it. He said while looking at the girl, who nodded in response, right, I don't think she looks like a tomato. She seems like a kanoichi that has a lot of potential that could help her on her road to Hokage. Well, that's if I don't beat her to it first. Finished Naruto with a challenging smirk as he looked at Kishina, making her blush a little at his piercing silver eyes that were just as cute as his face, she just turned away from him when she noticed the teacher entered the room. Come on now, class, sit down. We have a new student, so can Naruto please make his way to the front? Asked a teacher, while he calmed the class down. The group of girls were about to retort to the delusional Naruto about not knowing beauty when it stood in front of him, but one gaze from the teacher, and they scuttled back to their seats. Naruto had just gotten up from his seat when a hand was placed on his arm. Spinning his head around to the hand attached to his arm, he followed the fair-skinned arm back to the owner, Kishina. Thank you. It was two simple words spoken in a low pitch, so only he would hear it. Naruto nodded to her in response and put on a smile to his graceful face, which in turn, made Kishina smile back, before her hand moved off his arm. Naruto trotted down the stairs, not caring that everyone was staring at him. He walked down the stairs with his body on autopilot with a smile on his face, as he thought about what Kishina said. Two simple words that could bring someone from being depressed to happiness for helping someone, it brought a nice warm feeling to his stomach, as he stopped in front of the Chunin teacher, and faced the class. His smile is still in place, the same smile he used on Kashina as he surveyed the room. Why don't you introduce yourself Naruto? Asked a Chunin teacher. The young white-haired boy just hummed an agreement before he started talking towards his fellow classmates. My name is Naruto. 
I'm 12 years old and I'm going to become the next Hokage. Shouted the boy with much vigor and determination clear in his eyes, he smirked to himself before shouting one more word and looking straight at Kashina. He inwardly laughed to himself as he saw Kashina's smile turn into a smile with a deep blush present on her face, as her eyes hardened and stared at Naruto. Naruto smiled sheepishly while scratching the back of his head. A habit he didn't know where he got from, but smiled nevertheless to Kashina and muttered an apology to her. The teacher just stared at Naruto for a second, he knew of the boy's special condition, memory loss could plague a ninja in later life. In some cases, it could lead to people implanting false memories into your head and use you against your friends or village. It was when the teacher was about to send the boy back to his seat when a blonde-haired kid named Minato and a black-haired kid called Fugaku stood from their respective seats. I'm going to become the next Hokage. That means me and you are rivals for the seat. Shouted Minato nicely as he looked down at Naruto from his elevated position. While well, Naruto smiled at the boy and looked towards Fugaku. All the while Fugaku's eyes hardened at the white-haired enigma. His only rival in the class was Minato. This Naruto person was an enigma in his own rights, and Fugaku didn't like things he didn't understand. So he voiced his opinion to the boy. Huh, how did you get into the class this late anyway? Someone that doesn't even know their own last name means that you were abandoned as a baby or you gave up your last name because your family were disgraces. He said with a sneer. Minato and Makoto just eyed Fugaku for his inappropriate comment about a boy he didn't even know, while Kishina was sending an angry glare to the back of his head. What right did he have to insult someone that stuck up for her? She was about to retaliate to the inappropriate comment made by Fugaku when she looked towards Naruto. His smile had left his face while a frown married his eyebrows. It seemed the comment struck a nerve because the frown looked so out of place, in her opinion. She wanted to see if he was alright, to comfort him if he need be, but that was blown out the window when he retaliated. Right, because I'm that ashamed of my family that I would give up my last name. He asked rhetorically, it seems that you like to insult people before you get to know them. Arrogance will get you killed in the life of a ninja, and you'd be the first one. I bet just because you're from some good clan you think you can talk down to anyone. Well good luck mister because I'll put you in your place 100% of the time. Said Naruto calmly while he took to walking back to his seat. He left a gaping Fugaku, a classroom of laughter, and surprised raised eyebrows from Makoto and Minato. Obviously wondering if he could back up that claim, but only Kashina saw the big picture. His face still had a frown on it, and if you looked close enough, you could see the hurt look in his eyes as he sat back down next to her and slung his arms onto the desk and pretended to be asleep. She was about to see if he was okay and place a hand on his back in a comforting manner. But that idea was again blown out the window when the teacher started his speech. It has been a real pleasure to teach all of you in this class. You are all upcoming ninja in your own right, and some if not most will become legends in the ninja world. You all have talent that needs to be brought out, so, teams of three-man cells have been devised by the Hokage to make sure to bring the best out of all of you. However, Naruto's appearance has caused an imbalance in the teams, and one team will be a four-man cell. Said the man calmly, he picked up the roster from his wooden desk and began to read through the list, team 1 will be dot dot team 3 will consist of, Nawaki Senju, Makoto Ichiha, Kishina Yuzumaki and Naruto, while your Jonin Sensei will be Natsumi Suratobi. He said and was met with three whoops of joy and fake snoring from Naruto, arm team 4 will consist of, Minato Namikaze, Fugaku Ichiha and Hiyashi Hayuga, and your Jonin Sensei will be Jureya of the Senen. He said as he read out the last few teams, your Jonin Senseis will be here momentarily. He finished with a smile as the class broke out into laughter, glees of happiness, some disappointment and all-around chatter. Nawaki decided to grab his chair and place it at the end of Makoto's row, so he could get to know Naruto. Makoto was slightly annoyed with Naruto however, not because of anything he had done, but she, just like her second cousin Fugaku, hated enigmas. So at that point on, she set herself a goal to get to know the white-haired boy. Ashina on the other hand was nearly bouncing up and down in joy. She was with her two best friends and the white-haired boy she wanted to get to know. Overall, it was a good deal and team for her. She knew he wasn't asleep, he was faking it to hide his disappointment because of Fugaku's statement. But that didn't mean she would let him sleep when they needed to know him as a team. Hey Kishina-chan, Makoto-chan, would you mind waking Naruto for me, I think we should get to know him better before our sensei comes, asked Nawaki. Makoto looked expectantly towards Kishina who signed at her friend. If Kishina was honest, she thought the boy faking sleep was quite cute when he was peaceful, not that he or anyone else could get that from her. So in the end, she shook his shoulder gently a few times as he lifted his head off the desk and rubbed imaginary sleep from his eyes. That what do you want Kishina? Questioned the boy with his unwavering and in Kishina's case gaze. It wasn't the stare of a curious boy, but a stare that held authority and had been through wars. 
It made no sense to her, even if he didn't know he was doing it, it was as though he wasn't from this time. So Kashina did what she could do, blush a little and stutter some incoherent sentences under her breath. Naruto, being the memoryless boy he was, didn't know what to do, so he looked around until his eyes landed on a boy at the end of their row. Er I'm sorry, but who are you? Asked Naruto to Nawaki, who in return gained a tick mark above his head. I'm Nawaki, your teammate, along with these two here. Weren't you listening to the teacher just? Asked a bewildered Nawaki as Naruto shook his head before he was about to rest his head again when Makoto started talking. Naruto, where did you come from? I've never seen you around before. She questioned. All three of them seemed to have noticed Naruto's demeanor changed from a tired boy to a downcast boy that looked like he just lost his favorite toy. Ashina was about to touch his shoulder to see if he was alright when eyes darted away from Mikoto. But he continued talking even without looking towards them to hide his grief. Well, Mikoto. She nodded her head towards him. Well Mikoto, I don't have any memories about my life up until yesterday when I woke up in the middle of Kanoha's forest. Naruto took a deep sigh, I don't have a clue how I got here and that I don't know anyone here. He finished with a lone tear escaping his eye. Now they knew why he was so upset about Fugaku's comment. It must have been a slap to the face when confronted about memories and not knowing who your family was. It only proved to serve the fact that Fugaku was and spoke before he thought things through. Like his actions as a ninja, he attacks without thinking of a plan and gets through on talent alone. The Kodo was about to say an apology when the door to the classroom slid open with a loud creak. In stepped the three Sanin, two Uchihas, two Hayugas, two Yamanakas and one Siratobi. Well Siratobi based on all their clan, uses a bow staff for tie and dot. The Siratobi woman has long brown hair tied up in a ponytail, dark eyes that contrast between black and brown. She was wearing a purple kimono-like dress and a jonin vest over the top, with a black sheath bow staff sporting from her shoulder. Team 3, meet me on the roof. She ushered before she disappeared in a plume of smoke. The four of them looked at each other before Mikoto, Nawaki and Kashina got out of their seats and went over to the door. They were about to call for Naruto to follow them, but when they looked back, the class and the jonin were in shock because of what Naruto had done, all that was left was a plume of leaves indicating the shunshin technique. The three children looked at each other blankly before realization hit them, and they stormed off out of the room and straight to the roof. After the teacher left the room, Naruto felt a strange urge to copy what she did. And well, the results were a gaping teacher and panting classmates that wanted to see where he had gone. He didn't understand how he knew all of this stuff. It was like the information was there and he just didn't know how to access it on his own. It was more of an instinctual feeling he got at the back of his mind that told him to do it. And that is where we are now. Our favorite white-haired hero sat calmly on the railing on top of the academy, while his three teammates, Kishina, Mikoto and Nawaki, were gaping in awe, while his new sensei, Natsumi, had raised an eyebrow to show she was surprised by his sudden appearance. Naruto, how did you do that? Asked Kishina through ragged breaths. It wasn't every day a person you didn't know that had no memory could effortlessly perform a shunshin technique flawlessly. Naruto's casual response was a shrug of the shoulders and a big grin to support his reason for not knowing. Mikoto and the Waki were too shocked to even say anything and rested on the bench in front of the sensei for a breather. Ashina, however, sat next to Naruto on the railing. Naruto just seemed to analyze her to see what she was doing. Having no memory on how to act around people, it was quite a shock for him to be casual to other people when he didn't know how to. Itsumi just shrugged off her surprise with a loud cough to gain her new genin's attention. It seemed to work as well because all their heads shot around to face the teacher who was sporting an amused smile. So, Team 3. How about we get to know each other? I'm sure you four know each other, but I don't know anything about any of you. She lied through her teeth. One part of being a Jonin instructor was to know all about your team, well, apart from Naruto, she knew her team. Makoto nodded her head and decided to speak first, my name is Makoto Uchiha. I'm part of the Uchiha clan and have awakened my Sharingan. My hobbies include Dango, Kushi-chan, Nawaki-kun and learning clan jutsus and tojutsu styles. She finished solemnly, when she said Kushi-chan she noted a confused face from Naruto. So she dully expected a question from him and a blushing Kashina. She had hit her mark as well when he spoke up, her Makoto, who is Kushi-chan? He asked with his head tilted slightly sideways. As soon as the question was asked, Kashina started to turn a deep scarlet, while she leaned back a little from Naruto's view to shake her head about revealing the secret. This was Makoto's chance, she would finally have a one-on-one -on -one with Kashina. She could use this as blackmail. Or, she could embarrass her in front of Naruto. To be honest, she didn't understand why she didn't want Naruto to know, it's not like she likes him or any. And there it was. Mikoto finally found her ultimate blackmail. She had just realized that Kishina, whether subconsciously or not, had a slight attraction to Naruto. 
It brought the biggest smile to Makoto's face at that instant, while Naruto was still gazing at her. Well Naruto, Kushi-chan is just a girl I know. You might also know her if you put enough thought into it. She said as Kashina sighed in relief without registering the other part, her black-haired friend said. Naruto's puzzled face was the only reminder to the conversation, as Natsumi decided to carry on with the introductions, when she motioned towards Nawaki to begin his. Yeah. My name is Nawaki Senju. I like all my friends, learning cool jutsus, my family and especially my sister Tsunade. I hate people that use other people, perverts and rapists. My dream is to become the best Hokage ever. He finished by pumping his fist into the air and shouting to the sky. The action of course caused Natsumi and Naruto to snicker giggle, while Mikoto and Kashina sweat dropped at the scene. This was normal for Nawaki, and they had grown used to it, however, it still caused them to be a bit awkward around him in what they dubbed fantasy mode. Picking themselves up off the ground, Kashina turned to find Naruto staring at her, while Chuckles kept escaping his lusciousness. It was obvious that he was laughing at her for sweat dropping, and she couldn't help but blush at the now regrettable action. Itsumi broke Kashina from her internal musing about remembering not to sweat drop or do any verbal tics in front of Naruto. Natsumi simply called out to Kashina and swept her pale arms around her in a gesture to speak up. Kashina caught on quickly before riding herself next to Naruto on the railings and sighed before speaking, my name is Kashina Yuzumaki. I'm from Yuzushi Agakur and was in the middle of being taught Fuinjutsu. My likes include, my friends, my family, Raymond, Fuinjutsu and Mido sama She sighed as she thought of Mido. She was like a mother to her when she first joined Konoha, but she died and passed on the Kaiubi to Kashina on her deathbed because of her special chakra, I dislike rapists, perverts, people who use other people for selfish reasons, and the villages that attacked Yuzu a year after I left. She finished with a frown. She didn't even know who attacked her home, so she had no way of understanding who was behind the fall of her village. It infuriated her to no end, it was like she was being kept in the dark about it, so she wouldn't leave the village and follow after revenge. Which bearing in mind is a stupid thought anyway, she is 12 and a genin at most. Anyone of a higher rank could have taken her out. She was so caught up in her internal battle that she jumped when a reassuring hand softly clutched at her shoulder. Slowly turning her hand to follow the hand to the owner, she saw Naruto with a concerned expression written on his face as he searched her eyes. She didn't know why, but she felt like she could be held by his hand all day and can enjoy every minute of it. It was like his figure just radiated warmth and compassion that drew her into slightly liking him more than a friend. She saw him open his mouth to ask her about her concerns, but she cut him off quickly with two simple words, thank you. She whispered again so only he would hear. It was comforting to her to know a new person like Naruto could get her to warm up to him so fast. She didn't know why, but she felt like she could trust Naruto with her life, if push came to shove. Naruto's face softened at hearing the words and moved his hand from the girl's shoulder. He looked back to his sensei and nodded when she gestured to him to start his introduction. My name is Naruto. I don't know where I'm from and I don't know anything about where I am. I guess I like my team, Kishina, Nawaki and Mikoto and my new sensei. I have found one dislike, mornings. The sunlight is so annoying in the morning. I wish I could blow up the sun. Shouted Naruto with an evil gleam in his eyes while his team and sensei sweat dropped. He calmed himself down and sighed. I'd say my newfound ambition is to become a Hokage that is stronger than the rest, especially Hokage-sama. When I become Hokage, I want him to look at me proudly for letting me stop in his home when I first got here. Naruto said solemnly while he stared up at the sky. Kashina and Mikoto looked at his soft expression before sighing nicely at his dream. It must be hard not having your memory to help you out in these situations. Nawaki saw Naruto as a potential rival friend, and his respect for the boy went up drastically. However, Natsumi was slightly taken back when he mentioned staying at her house when he first got here. So she decided to voice her opinion to the white-haired boy. Hey Naruto, when did you stay at my I mean Hokage-sama's house? She asked, catching her slip about her house being the daughter of the Hokage. Even though her last name practically gave it away, she hoped the boy hadn't made the connection yet. Maybe she could ask her dad about it, but she decided against it to just ask her genin. Naruto looked at her for a second before breaking out in a grin. When I was first found in the forest, I had to sit an exam, then the Hokage let me stay in his cool mansion, while he sorted an apartment for me to be in today. Said Naruto excitedly. Itsumi nodded to the boy while internally thinking about asking her dad about the situation. Finally after all the introductions, she told the genins to gather around her while she introduced herself. My name is Natsumi Suratobi, I have many likes and dislikes. Some of my likes include things like, Dango, family and learning the ninja arts. My dislikes vary from, rapists, perverts and leeches. My dream is to have a nice family with a man I love with all my heart and become an Anbu captain for my dad. She finished with the interesting looks from her genin. 
when she saw that they were about to speak, she held up her gloved hands before continuing with speaking to conclude the session. As of now Team 3, I need to test to see if you can become a proper genin for your village. Therefore, I will need you to be present at training ground 3 tomorrow at 10 o'clock. She said as she walked over to the railing and stepped on them. She turned back to see her genin look at her like she was crazy. They passed the academy didn't they? Doesn't that mean they are genin anyway? Make sure not to eat any food or else you will throw up tomorrow. I've got such a test planned for you all. She said with a sadistic smile on her face as she disappeared in a plume of smoke. The four genin sat stood there dumbfounded, contemplating what the sensei just said before Makoto and Nawaki stood up from the group and looked at Naruto and Kishina. I'm going to have to get back, Kishina-chan, Naruto. Father is going to be worried if I'm late to training. See you guys tomorrow. She said as she walked from the group and down the stairs. Nawaki nodded as well and spoke, Ni-chan said she would train me for a bit as well, so it looks like I'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure to bring your A-game, we'll need it against sensei. He said as he took off running after Makoto. They vaguely heard him shout, wait up Makoto-chan. As he disappeared from view. Hashina looked disappointed, she wanted the four of them to go to the nice Raymond stand on the way to her apartment. However, that idea was blown out of the window when they both left to do training. But she did still have Naruto. Maybe she could get to know him better and possibly help him get his memory back. Hey Naruto. Do you want to come to the Raymond stand with me? You know, to get to know each other better. She asked with a nice smile. The boy in question looked towards his red-haired friend before a soft smile came to his face as he nodded. It was a way for him to get to know his friend better, he just wished Mikoto and Nawaki would be there as well. However, what he didn't expect was to be grabbed by the hand and literally dragged off the floor, so he was parallel to the hard surface and pulled to Kashina's favorite dining place. So off they went, on the road to their new destination. All the while seeds of friendship being placed in them towards the other. This seemed like the beginning of a new and long-lasting friendship between the red-haired hot-tempered girl and the calm and relaxed white-haired boy, a friendship that would be impossible to break and would only lead to new options for them later in life. This was the start of Naruto's first friend in Konoha. A friendship he would cherish for the rest of his life. It was an early morning in Konoha. The residents were just starting to rise as the early morning dew from the sun started to fade. The crisp wind swam through the barren streets like water flows through cracks. It was about 7 o'clock in the morning, and our four favorite heroes were standing in a lusciously green training ground, staring down their sensei like a piece of meat left for savaging. As Hiruzen had promised, Naruto had gotten his apartment after his Raymond trip with Kishina. In fact, he discovered his abnormally large love for Raymond. Much like Kishina's in a way as they both devoured their food in less than 30 seconds. It was really an amusing sight for the passers-by. What looked like a romantic date between a boyfriend and girlfriend turned into a horror show as both teenagers demolished their food like they hadn't been fed for weeks. Now though, they were placed in front of their sensei. All of the children were standing attentively as the cold morning winds found its way into their hairs and softly fluttered all the extra strands into the breeze as if the hair had a mind of its own. I'm sure you are all wondering why you are all up quite early. Asked Natsumi in the eerie quiet training ground. The response she got was a grunt in response from her most eccentric genin, Kishina. It was one of the things Naruto discovered about Kishina when they went to the ramen shop. Kishina like him had an irrational hatred for mornings. It was one of the traits he found the most cute about her. How she passionately described her hatred for mornings because they steal her sleeping time. In all honesty, Naruto thought Kishina was quite cute. She had an amazing personality, she was abnormally attractive for a 12-year-old, well, to Naruto anyway. She also knew the best way to cheer him up when his depressing thoughts about not having his memory plagued his mind. It originally started with her poking him in the side, but what she didn't expect was for him to start laughing. It was obvious a maniacal plan came to her mind when her eyes gained that glint. She ruthlessly attacked Naruto's side in the ramen shop. It even went as far as making Naruto roll around on the floor in hysterics. However, he couldn't because Kashina had sat on his and tickled his sides without stopping until she noticed their position and blushed a deep scarlet. That was one of the best memories Naruto had, and in all honesty, he promised himself to cherish it, so he wouldn't ever forget the memory of gaining his first true friend. Come on Kishina-chan, the mornings aren't that bad now, are they? Asked Naruto with a slight giggle at the red-haired friend pouting at him. During their talk yesterday in the ramen cafe, the two children even went as far as saying affectionate suffixes at the end of their names. It was for them both to know that they had made a new friend and would cherish the friendship they had gained above all else. Itsumi raised an eyebrow to her genin's new behavior. It seemed that Naruto had gotten close to Kishina in that short amount of time, and from what Natsumi read from the academy, Kishina never warmed up to people that quickly. She didn't even warm up that quickly to Mikoto, and she was the girl's best friend. 
Makoto and Nawaki's eyes slightly bulge out of their sockets when they see Kashina and Naruto acting like they had been best friends all their life. It was slightly nerve-wracking for Makoto to see the two of them warm up to each other so quickly after probably one encounter. Hell, it had taken Makoto four months to get Kashina to be her friend. Well, it seems Naruto has a strange effect on people. He got Kashina to open up to him in a day. That's definitely got to be a world record. Natsumi mused herself before making an overly dramatic cough to get all her genin's attention. However, it seemed to just make Naruto and Kashina blush in embarrassment at being caught in one of their chats, where they were oblivious to the world. Natsumi just sighed, today is going to be a long day at this rate she thought before clapping her hands together. Okay now team 3. The point of this is that after you leave the academy, you have to do a test made by your jonin to see if you are genin material or need to attend the academy again. Natsumi said with her best poker face on to not show her internal amusement at the perplexed looks of astonishment of her team's face. The Kodo and Nawaki looked shocked, they had managed to pass the test with amazing results. So they thought that was all it took to become a genin. They didn't realize that there was a test after the induction test to see if they could successfully be genin. Kashina knew what was coming. She had been told by her botch and Mido, what would happen after the genin induction test. She just didn't find it very necessary to tell everyone. Naruto was just passive at it all. He didn't have a clue what was going on, but tried to put the best fake shocked face he could. Now then, the rules for this exercise are as follows, you will each take part in a one-on-one -on -one match with whoever I say your opponent is. You can only use the style I say you can for the whole match, whether it is Tai, Nin or Jinjutsu. Natsumi finished while lying each of her genin. She was mentally working out matches to get the best out of her four students. Yeah I'm gonna show sensei how good I am. Shouted Nawaki in an obnoxious tone. It seemed he still had the academy mentality of what happens in fights. The Kodo and Kashina rolled their eyes at him. He was always like that in the academy, granted, he was talented in Tujutsu, probably a benefit of being Tsunade's little brother and a senju heir, but his arrogance really needed to be toned down. Naruto, however, gave Nawaki a slight smile at his enthusiasm. He knew Nawaki had the same mentality to fights as him, well, similar. Naruto knew it wasn't about proving yourself, but completing the mission, working with your teammates and protecting the ones you love. Now then, Natsumi started, we'll have Naruto vs Nawaki first for only Tujutsu. Then Makoto vs Kashina in Jinjutsu and the final fight will be all of you against each other in Ninjutsu. She finished while ushering the boys to the middle of the clearing, so that she could review them. Makoto and Kashina followed their sensei's lead and stood to the side of the clearing to watch the boys' performance. Naruto and Nawaki walked, side by side, straight to the middle of the clearing. Bound to each other in a sign of respect, they started walking backwards until there was a 10-foot gap between them. I'm sorry Naruto, but you won't beat me in a Tejutsu fight, Nawaki started saying, I was taught a little by my sister. He said, trying to goad Naruto to either give up or get angry. He got neither as Naruto unconsciously slipped into a fighting style with his right foot slightly behind his left. His arms didn't move at all, just stayed stationary. Nawaki, having been taught by his sister in Tejutsu, started to analyze Naruto's stance for holes he could exploit. Poor Naruto, his stance has so many holes that it isn't funny. Nawaki mused to himself, never realizing it was exactly what Naruto wanted him to think. Begin. Natsumi's naturally angelic voice echoed through the clearing bringing Nawaki out of his internal musing. The young boy launched himself at Naruto with impressive speed for an just up and at them academy student while Naruto stood there. Motionless only his eyes narrowing slightly made everyone in the clearing know he was paying attention. Nawaki was on Naruto in a matter of seconds, throwing fists and kicks at all the places Naruto had left gapes. Little did Nawaki know that Naruto was in the perfect stance to counter all the fists and kicks that he sent to the white-haired enigma. That was how the match carried on for five minutes with Naruto countering all the punches and kicks. Nawaki couldn't comprehend how Naruto was doing it, just like the rest of the clearing were finding it hard to comprehend. Everyone was completely dumbfounded, even Naruto himself was slightly confused, he didn't know why, but his body was reacting on its own. Nawaki's relentless attack started wearing down, and Naruto's closed fist went in for the kill. As soon as he countered Nawaki's kick, Naruto sprung the brunette-haired boy back a step, successfully knocking him off balance and causing him to stumble slightly. When the boy got his footing back, Naruto's first was a few inches from Nawaki's face. Closer and closer the clenched hand got, until it was only 5 centimeters from making contact with a worried brunette, when Naruto saw something fuzzy extend over his eyes. HN Dog, your ninja skills are less than mediocre, you don't possibly deserve a place on this team. Maybe you could do us all a favor and quit. Sneered a black-haired boy in a blue turtleneck jumper and white shorts. He had cold black eyes that screamed arrogance and radiated anger. Yeah Naruto. You'll never be as cool as Sasuke. 
screamed a pink-haired girl in a long pink dress that fell just past her knees. She stood next to the newly named Sasuke with hearts in her eyes. To her, he was the epitome of cool, and despite their young age, she, like most other girls at the academy, had already professed their love to the arrogant boy. Haven't you noticed Naruto? No one in the village wants you here. Just do everyone a favor and disappear, just like that girl did. She left you and she'll never come back. They shouted but in a silently more manageable pitch to the boy. Naruto didn't know who those people were, but it hurt that they were shouting at him for no reason. He didn't know who they were or why they were shouting at him, but he felt like he should, like he was missing something. But nevertheless, it still hurt a lot. Naruto woke from his memory when he noticed Nawaki on the floor, Naruto's arm outstretched but trembling just in front of the boy's face. One silent tear fell from Naruto's right eye as he thought about the feeling those two random people gave him. He didn't know why he cared so much, whether it was because they were Ingatim or the fact that he should have known them he didn't know, but, that girl she mentioned who she was and what she was to him. Naruto. Shouted the mellow voice he had come to love from Kashina. He didn't know how her voice could still sound so sweet even when she was shouting bloody murder at children for taking the piss out of her hair. The white-haired boy looked to his left slightly, only to be brought into a soft hug from the girl that had been working her way into his heart. Naruto relented, opting to shoving his head into the side of her neck and wrapping his shuddering arms around her lithe, but slightly chubby, form, while Kishina was whispering compassionate words into his ear. The Kodo, Nawaki and Mitsumi let them have their moment, while Nawaki went to talk to their sensei. Mitsumi sensei, where did Naruto learn to counter like that? His stance was rigged with holes, yet, they were all feints wanting to lure me in. He could have finished it, but I don't think he knew how to. Assumed Nawaki. He had first-hand experience fighting Naruto now, and he could tell the white-haired boy didn't have a clue what he was really doing. His stance was perfect in correspondence to how well his body must have been balanced to counter all types of attacks, but during the fight, it seemed his body was on autopilot. Thinking silently, Natsumi guessed the same as Nawaki. She was about to comment to Naruto about his stance when the match started, but after seeing what happened, she was glad she didn't. As her father had said, Naruto was a prodigy by every meaning of the word. She just assumed he was good at theory, judging by his high written test score, but now, she knew he was probably the most capable one on the team. Then it clicked, she knew what she could help Naruto with. The boy seemed to be relying on instinct, and while good, wouldn't do much against an experienced foe. So, she concocted the perfect plan, using Naruto's instincts to see where he stood and expanding from there on helping him reacquire his memories and help him using what he already knows to turn him into a well-refined Konoha shinobi. Alright team, we'll have the rest of the day off, start missions tomorrow, but for now, let's get something to eat. Natsumi said, trying to lift Naruto's somber mood. She would have a word with him later about why he started shuddering and why he didn't finish Nawaki, but that could wait, he seemed to be in some sort of inner turmoil. All the kids nodded while Nawaki zoomed off to pick the restaurant while no one else was watching. The Wonder Dragon, one of the most established food cuisines in the whole of Konoha. It was rumored that the Wonder Dragon was so well established that it had a restaurant in every hidden village in the elemental nations. Of course, rumors are just talk, not proven until it is confirmed by a source that is directly linked to the rumor, but it never stopped people from questioning. This restaurant happened to be the most expensive in the village as well. Not that Nawaki knew that obviously, but he still decided to go. He had heard from his 22-year-old sister that it was one of the best places to go in the village, the young boy had asked her if she went with a date, only to be on the receiving end of a light flick to the ear. That flick still hurts to think about the boy thought to himself. He was currently seated at a small booth near the back of the establishment, with the rest of his team, Naruto and Kashina on one side, the latter seemed adamant to be on that side, and because of that Nawaki couldn't get any male bonding time with Naruto and him, Mikoto and Natsumi on the other. The restaurant itself was very fancy looking, there were expensive paintings littering nearly all the walls, the tables were made from mahogany wood with a shiny polished coat over it, and the place was packed with important looking people. The only reason Naruto and the team got on was because of Natsumi's looks that she used ever so subtly on the waiter to allow them to enter, and the fact that she is the daughter of the current Hokage. But, no one on the team could deny it, not even the girls, their sensei was extremely good looking. And being only 18 was an amazing accomplishment for anyone. In front of the kids were four different dishes. The dish in front of Nawaki and Makoto was two pieces of rare steak only found in certain places in the elemental nations. The dent of the two steaks alone would cause a massive hole in their sensei's funds. The dish in front of Naruto and Kishina was more cost-effective and probably just as nice, Maizo Raymon. It still amazed Natsumi as to how many bowls Kishina had eaten, seven in total, while Naruto was more reserved but still had four. So, Naruto, Natsumi started, gaining the attention of everyone at the table. 
What happened just before the end of your match with Nawaki? She happened to notice Nawaki subconsciously rubbing his arse from when he fell when Naruto stopped the punch aimed for his face. Naruto's somewhat happy mood fell slightly, everyone seemed to have noticed, but only Kashina was close enough to do anything about it. She slowly moved her hand to rest on top of his slightly bigger hand, as an act of comfort for the white-haired genin. Naruto smiled at her action and nodded as thanks to the red-haired girl, before raising his head ever so slightly to meet the gaze of the rest of his team. I remembered something. Now, usually, that doesn't mean anything for normal people. But, then again, Naruto isn't a normal person. He is suffering from amnesia, and that little statement alone managed to show Natsumi that he was indeed able to regain his memory. The team sensei saw this as two different chances and positives. One, it could help them find out who Naruto actually is, because the white-haired enigma was still as confusing as when he was found, and it will also help with their team's teamwork and dynamics. It was a win-win for her, and she would be damned if she didn't help the young prodigy try to regain his memory. I see. The woman replied. It was a start for the young boy anyway. Ashina seemed really pleased that he was remembering anything about his past life. If her face was anything to go on that is. Her eyes shot wide open, excitement within her amethyst-colored eyes. She didn't know why, but she had this warm feeling in the pit of her stomach whenever she touched or had one of their moments with Naruto. It was something she always strived for, and she doubted Naruto minded. He never told her to not touch him, or when she sometimes assaulted him by tickling his side. Still, that warm in her stomach was so nice and lively that she always wanted to feel it. Nawaki was about to congratulate Naruto on his accomplishment at finally being able to remember something, when Tsunade walked through the door of the restaurant and straight to the table they were sitting at. Hello there Tsunade-san. Natsumi greeted accordingly, she was never one to show disrespect to higher-ups. Please, Natsumi, we have known each other since the academy, in no way am I higher than you. Tsunade-chan would be fine Tsumi-chan. Tsunade said with a bit of mirth in her voice. That was what everyone used to call Natsumi in the academy, and she hated it. Quite clearly shown by the tick that grew on her forehead that started to throb uncontrollably, the slide of the bulging vein had slightly scared the kids into thinking it was alive and about to take off at any moment. Well Tsu Chan, how about we tell Naruto Kun here about you wanting information about him? Hmm. I didn't take you for someone that likes younger boys. Natsumi countered, she remembered when Tsunade asked her about Naruto. She knew she was only being overprotective of Nawaki, but she was always someone to retaliate when she was being teased. Tsunade's cheeks adopted a red hue on them, she had to admit, Naruto surprisingly good looking for his age, not that she would tell anyone that, but that wasn't what she wanted information on. The blonde wanted to make sure this Naruto wasn't a shifty character and potentially bring harm to her little brother. D that wasn't what I did Sumi-chan and you know it. Shouted the blonde, clearly embarrassed by the predicament, stuttering slightly in a non senin way, despite her moniker as an ice bitch. After hearing the tad bit of information, Kishina's eyes narrowed ever so slightly in Tsunade's direction. Something that both Natsumi and Tsunade both caught. Nawaki didn't know how to react, he just sat there wide-eyed that his sister could possibly have feelings for his white-haired teammate, and Makoto just dot sat there, eating her steak casually. Did one of the senin just stutter? I wouldn't have guessed Tsunade Haim would stutter over a 13-year-old boy. Natsumi chuckled at the smoke clouds coming out of Tsunade's ears, if Natsumi was completely honest, she would say that Naruto was also good-looking, the same as Tsunade, but she wouldn't tell anyone that. Grabbing Nawaki by his arm roughly, Tsunade proceeded to drag Nawaki straight out of the shop, with his piece of steak in his mouth and the knife and fork still in his hands. The now four team sweat dropped slightly at Tsunade's actions before Natsumi decided it was time to leave and paid for all the meals. See you guys, Mikoto said once they got out of the restaurant. Thanks for paying sensei, she nodded to her sensei and waved to the two kids before heading to the Ichiha district. Natsumi, nodding towards Mikoto, also decided it was time to go. See you two tomorrow, remember, we still have to do the testing so be at the training ground at the same time as today. I let the other two know later. She said while walking off home. Naruto, being a gentleman, relied on his instincts on asking to walk Kashina home. She was flattered by his gesture for her to loop her arm through his. Doing as he wanted, they walked arm in arm to their apartments or clan house in Kashina's case and promised to have breakfast with each other. Even though, when they both unlocked their arms, the certain warmth in their stomach was put out like water on a fire, slowly causing a frown to form on both of their faces as they walked into their respective houses. Sounds of panting were echoing through the forest where Naruto and Ko were situated. Everyone had woken up early in order to get to the training ground and participate in the awaiting matches. They started with a Tejutsu match between Kashina and Makoto, with Makoto coming out on top of Kashina in under two minutes. It was safe to say, Kashina had the fighting style of a brawler, it was just swing and miss for the girl, something their sensei sought to change. 
Naruto and Makoto sparred in a Tajutsu match as well, with Makoto winning due to having more experience in her Tajutsu style, as well as the Sharingan with one time in each eye. Something that shocked her however was that she couldn't, even if she didn't want to, copy Naruto's Tajutsu style, his stances and counters were so perfectly timed that she Sharingan couldn't memorize the whole sequence. Next was Nawaki vs Kashina and Tajutsu. That match lasted under a minute due to Nawaki's prowess in Tajutsu, the young boy swore not to underestimate his opponent again after he lost to Naruto. He could remember thinking Naruto would be a walk in the park, next minute he is on his back end on the floor with Naruto's fist in his face. The Jinjutsu was a pointless battle, Mikoto won easily because of her Sharingan. It was a completely unfair fight, like bringing a gun to a knife fight. But nevertheless, it didn't stop Naruto from trying, he managed to catch Kishina in a Jinjutsu that took her a little bit of time to break out of. And then finally, they were up to this point now, all of them on their backs waiting for the next match, the most anticipated one of them all. The ninjutsu match would show their sensei who was the ninjutsu specialist on the team. She had already guessed it was Mikoto, because of her clan, but then again Naruto, Kishina and Nawaki had all surprised her today. So far, Naruto, Nawaki and Mikoto were good at tajutsu, but only Mikoto and Kishina were good at jinjutsu. All right my little genin, everyone on their feet and meet in the center of the training field for the next and last exam she shouted to the four early teens. She had a lot of hope for the ninjutsu part of the test, it would give Natsumi a good review of what her team needed to improve. The four teens begrudgingly hoofed their feet through the dirt and into the center of the clearing. Makoto thought she would breeze through this part, but was unsure on what Naruto might have known in regards to ninjutsu. The Waki chose not to underestimate Naruto again, and decided to go for Naruto first to see where the white-haired boy stood in ninjutsu. But, Kishina's thoughts were completely different compared to the other two. She wanted to prove to her whole team that she wouldn't be the weak link on the team, and that she was a competent Kinoichi. Alright you four, you may begin. And it started, Mikoto reacted first by jumping back two feet, and went through hand seals quickly for a genin, and launched a fireball from her mouth. High release. Fireball jutsu. The fireball was at a size to be expected for a green genin, but it was still slightly impressive that she could do elemental techniques. The other three reacted just as fast, all substituting themselves with logs in puffs of smoke all puffs of smoke, but Naruto thought. Makoto looked to her left, then up, and finally right before the sound of ground breaking beneath her. A hand shot through the floor, making the ground part for its presence, and grabbed Makoto's foot that she couldn't get out of the way quick enough, before devouring her whole body into the floor with just her head showing. Naruto emerged from the floor not a second later with a small smirk on his face. Surprisingly, he had another breakthrough. He actually remembered how to use that earth release. Hiding like a mole technique, successfully and the most effective way to use it. Quickly getting over her shock, Mikoto glared at Naruto. It seemed he excelled in ninjutsu, more so than the other fields. However, she had to smile when she saw Kunai heading straight for Naruto from the shrubbery surrounding the clearing. She knew it would land a few inches from Naruto's feet, but that's what Nawaki wanted. As soon as the sharp knife landed, Nawaki had substituted himself with the kunai and swung his fist straight at the back of Naruto's head. The latter only managed to just duck out of the way before sending his foot careening behind him and straight into Nawaki's solar plexus. Nawaki flew backwards but managed to correct himself in mid-air and landed gracefully on the hard floor from the hard kick Naruto had caught him with. Kishina had chosen the exact moment Nawaki landed to use a small water she knew from studying scrolls her great-grandmother had given her before passing away. The small lake in the corner of the clearing, a small whip of water, rose from the depths of the aqua puddle. A small whip-like body of water sped across the clearing and caught Naruto, unprepared, in the back of his head, sending him face first to the floor. The young boy had managed to catch himself in a handstand before shooting off his arms and a few feet into the air. Bakodo, who had managed to recover from the earth, used another one of her fireballs to hit Naruto. She had barely used any chakra in the so it wouldn't hurt if hit, just singe the skin and burn the clothes. Ultimate humiliation she chuckled madly at her thought, secretly wanting to see what Naruto looked like under his white shirt. Naruto, seeing the fire coming at him, couldn't get out of the way in time, so he put his arms in a cross formation over his face to take the brunt of the attack, while some of the fireballs harmlessly flew to the side of his body. After Nawaki had landed, he saw Kashina use her water whip to attack Naruto and decided to attack her. He used another kunai substitution getting close to her, sweeping at her unsuspected legs and then punching her in the gut, sending her a few feet into the clearing. Makoto had wanted to see what Naruto looked like under his shirt, she never expected to see such a well-toned, wiry body. She was really, 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 regretting that decision, there was no way she could fight him now. His shirt had gone, left was his impressive upper body, and she had chosen that moment to sport a rather large blush. 
Teching himself over quickly and noticing that he wasn't burnt or singed, Naruto made a mad dash straight to the stocks to Lichia. The girl in question was still unable to comprehend how Naruto was without a shirt on. He shouldn't have a body like that. We're only 13 for crying out loud. She thought to herself in a trance-like state. She didn't even realize Naruto was running towards her at high speeds before he seemingly vanished in front of her. Teching her surroundings again, she noted vaguely that Naruto wasn't above, to the left or right, so that only left the group. Bang. The floor erupted in a flurry of debris and rocks underneath the unsuspecting Ichiha. A well-placed explosive note under her from Naruto's earth release. Hiding like a mole technique left her gliding horizontally in the air, bracing from the impact that was surely to come. Quickly turning around, Nawaki saw Makoto shoot into the air from the explosion under her. Imagine his surprise when he sees Naruto appear from behind a tree quite close to the explosion, throwing a kunai just above Makoto and substituting himself with it just like Nawaki did at the start of the match. Hey that's my move you jerk. Nawaki shouted angrily at the still airborne Naruto. Well how was he meant to feel? Happy that Naruto took his move. Hell no. Noticing Nawaki's attention not on her, Kishina as quickly as she could, did the required hand seals for water release. Water bullet jutsu. Her cheek swelling up with an unusual bulge, veins pricking up with the force her cheeks were under. Kishina still hadn't perfectly mastered the, as seen by how long it took to build up, but, when you're in Yuzumaki, you don't seem to have much of an end with the chakra department. Releasing the built-up water ball, two perfectly spherical balls flew at the back of Nawaki's head. The first capturing him perfectly in the back sent him off his feet slightly, while the second caught the right side of his body, sending him spinning of course and straight to the feet of their sensei, Natsumi. Looks like you're out, Nawaki. Natsumi chuckled slightly, the utter look of disbelief on Nawaki's face was slightly funny. It wasn't a surprise that he was confused of where he was hit from, but nevertheless, he was out now. Hashina worriedly looked at Nawaki for a second, before she averted her eyes to the airborne Naruto and Makoto. Naruto was directly above her as they both sailed in the air. But, Kishina was slightly shocked to see Naruto use Makoto's back as a springboard that sent her propelling to the ground. Makoto was in a state of shock, caught so easily because the opponent had a good body. Mentally berating herself about her stupidity, she never noticed Naruto substituting himself with a kunai that he sent above her. She was only vaguely aware that Naruto had moved when he felt his feet planted firmly on her back, causing her to panic, before she was sent careening straight to the unforgiving floor. Closing her eyes and bracing her body for impact, she awaited the cold feeling of the rocky terrain. Nothing. She didn't feel anything but a slight beat coming from somewhere. Opening her eyes timidly, she got a face full of a slightly muscular body. Shifting her gaze upward slightly, she was confronted with the most amazing smile she had seen. Naruto, in all his glory, was holding her protectively to his and saved her from crashing into the floor. Enjoying her predicament slightly, she allowed Naruto to carry her to where Nawaki and Natsumi were standing, so that Naruto and Kishina could finish the fight. Dropping her off, only the slightest of blushes could be seen on Makoto's face, but the other two thought it was from the fight, so they paid it no mind. All the while Makoto watched Naruto's shirtless form travel back into the center of the clearing to finish the fight with Kishina. Acquiring the same thought process, Kishina carried herself steadily to the center, while lying Naruto's upper body appreciatively, hey, it wasn't every day an enigma with an amazing bod just loses his shirt in a spar, and she was going to abuse the sight. Hard. Let's finish this fight Kishina, the loser has to pay for Raymond tonight. Naruto jested to her. Watching her blow up over something so petty was oddly amusing for him, just, the way she reacted sent tingles down his spine that he loved. The shocked face on Kashina's face was picture perfect, mouth open and a dangerous glint in her eyes, oh he is suing for it now. She internally mused. Fine, she replied back, a slightly mischievous and determined look in her eyes, just don't cry to me when you lose like as she shouted to him while bobbing her tongue at him in a playful manner. The goosebumps, oh those goosebumps. He would never get used to them, they only occurred when it was Kashina that did something. It was like he felt something familiar, that it was almost like they were related or very close friends. Starting things off, Naruto ran forward, pulling out two shuriken. He threw one with pinpoint accuracy, so that Kashina would land directly above the second one he threw. So, like magic, his plan worked, and the white-haired boy substituted with a down shuriken, appearing in front of Kashina with a kunai poised at her neck. Looks like I won, eh, Kashina. Naruto said teasingly before doing something daring. He kissed Kashina's forehead before backing off and leaving a blush-heavy girl who looked like her knees were about to give way. Well, if you love birds have finished, Natsumi started, getting a surprised look from Naruto and an angry one from Kashina. I think I've got all the information I need on this team. So, with the power invested in me, I now pronounce you, Team 3. But beware, we start missions at 7 o'clock sharp, and I will drag you in your pajamas if you are late. 
she finished with an evil smirk on her face. The concept severely frightened the children of Team 3 before their sensei just vanished in a plume of smoke. Silence rang through the clearing, Naruto, well, he didn't know how to react, Mikoto and Nawaki were thinking of something to see, and Kishina was still lost on Naruto kissing her. Did it mean he liked her? She'd just have to find out herself. Mouth opening to voice her thoughts to Naruto, she was abruptly interrupted by Nawaki shouting at the top of his lungs, this calls for a celebratory dinner. Now of course, she didn't mind that, it was what Naruto said after, yeah Nawaki and Kishina's gonna pay for all of it. He motioned back with mirth in his voice and a smug smirk on his face. Kishina, being well Kishina did the only thing she could think of at the moment, curse Naruto's very existence. When I get my hands on you, Naruto, I swear I'll wring your neck. She screamed with all her might, red crazy hair flailing behind her, that made all three kids disappear back into town with their tails between their legs. Servers them right Kishina thought smugly before realization set in, they ditched me, they actually ditched me. Thanks for watching this video. If you really enjoy this video. Like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification. Don't forget to support and follow the wind stylus for writing that awesome fanfic and also make sure to comment on this story link in the description. See you in the next video. Goodbye.